Welcome to Idiot Syncratic. Y'all already know what this is. It's a show where what we're talking about today is all that fucking matters. It's the only thing that we're talking about, too. And you can't talk about anything else either. Just this. Just this show. That's it. The, the, the interest, the news bits that we do, uh, the nicknames we give each other, um, uh, the, the banter that we have. If you try to talk about anything else, you're done. You are done. You have, you have nothing else to live for. Nothing at all. I'm joined today by my co-host, <laughs> Justin Gomez, who has no nicknames today. None. As I decided, and I'm your host today, Alex Soto. Also, I have no nicknames today. AKA Boy. You, you'll hear that story. You gotta listen oh, to yeah. it. Oh yeah, listen to the audio only. <laughs> Even though you're, you obviously like video because you're here, but if you, want, if you want to hear news, you want to hear recaps, you want to hear other stuff. Stuff. There's more... There's more content because we just figured that you don't want to sit here for three hours and just look at our, look at us, look at each other. And, yeah. and, and giggle. Yeah, maybe if we're dancing while we're podcasting. Why aren't we dancing? There you go. Hey, I also just made up a mumble rap. If you guys want to hear it. Go. Oh, you do? Okay. Sitting at this table. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking on my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Because I am unable. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking on my coffee. Skrrr. Mumble rap. Mumble rap. Come at me. Ooh. Oh, that shit's hot. It's hot. Don't burn yourself, boy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Does the, the camera make me look kind of fat right now? <laughs> what, what's going on with that? I'm put my arms down. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Why am I so fat? You look like Hank from Breaking Bad. Shh. You know, he's like barreled. Hey, don't ever say that ever again. You mean my chest is... Um, you mean I'm barrel chested. Thanks, bro. Yeah. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> you look like a, like a toilet paper roll. Just like straight up and down, you know? All right, well, you have hairy armpits. Oh, man. Why you gotta be mean? And a stupid face. Oh, that's, that's the line. Where's my... I just picked a random one. You made new ones? No, that's been there. <laughs> just, yes. Hey, it's the first time I've ever used it. Oh, there shit. We go. It really is, because I didn't even know that existed. I might have one more that we've never used, but we'll wait. We'll wait. The, the day will come. You might have what? More. Herpes. Um. His peas. Yeah, we, we're gender neutral here. Yeah. Her peas. Z -peas. His peas. Z -peas. Z peas. Zim, zims, zims and zers. Zers peas. Okay, so anyways, we're going to be talking about today, the Doc and Marty. Think about it. Stud. I already guessed it. You ready? I'll give you three more seconds to guess. Three. Rick and Morty. Yep. <laughs> On the audio version, he got it like that. Yeah, I was like, oh, Rick and Morty. And I'm talking about Guide to Hipster Drinking, which... I think is about breweries and IPAs and double IPAs and triple IPAs and beanies, slouch beanies, and stashes. This guy's good. This guy's good. Yep. So, so try get... to guess what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it, I guess. Let's just dive right in. Let's just hold our breath and then dive right into the cold water. Yeah. Yeah. Into the cold, cold water. Skirt. Drinking on some coffee. Yeah. 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 Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. That's my next button. Oh, let's make one. Skirt. Let's make one today. I'm just going to take it. Yeah. Oh, wait. Let's, you, let's make You're more. busy, right? I'm just going to eat after this. Oh, okay. Shit, homeboy. You know how I go. Shit, I'm hungry. Skirt. All right, I'm going to go first because I just want to get it out of the way. I'm not going to lie. I wait. <laughs> I just want to get it out of the eyeway. Oh my god! <laughs> do we have any listeners from Mexico? Yeah, we do. We have one. Oh, oh, we got some new statses. Gracias, amigo. I should. I probably should have done those. Uh, those statses, uh, like way earlier. But yeah, we oh, got, yeah. Go got, ahead and talk about that. Right you now. want some statses? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, our both of our interests <clears throat> are going to be short today, so we're just going to fill you in with more just stuff. We're gonna. We're we're coming inside, and we're going to fill you up with more stuff. So I got some statistics, <laughs> log <laughs> got some statistics, logistics, some data, some data for you. I hate uh, when you say that. We 
I hate when you say that. I'm putting that shit on a shirt. Oh, you know what else? You, you've been doing that thing that Aaron does whenever, uh, when you say words and then Aaron says it like with his little, I hate when he does that shit. His little voice, you know? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't help it now because I, when I'm editing the film roll episodes, I- You he, hear him do it? Punk ass does it under his breath every time and you don't hear it when you're there, but I always, he always makes fun of me. Uh, so yeah, we have some more plays in Japan, Portugal, the US. In Japan. Mexico. We had a- we had a new country that was listening to us recently, but uh, okay, I'm gonna try to thank all the countries. Okay, good. Well, which okay, name a country. I thought you were gonna guess some countries. No, name some that we have listeners in. Norway. Um, Dankeschönd. That's not it. That's like I don't know what that is. What are you doing right now? I'm trying to thank them for listening. To oh, us. oh, actually, thank. Th- okay, gotcha. I'm trying to. Um, Mexico. Uh. Muchas gracias, amigos. I thought it was thank you, O. Um, Islamic, <laughs> Public, Islamic Republic of Iran. Okay. Um, oh, Iran. That's Persian. Oh, dang it. I knew this one. Sorry, sorry guys. I don't, I don't know how to say thank you, but you guys can email me. How, how do I say thank you yes. in, in Persia? Let's do uh, Saudi Arabia. Habibi. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Is that real? Thank you, Habibi. No, All right. That, that means like, I think it means brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah. It's probably a guy. Let's be honest. It's probably a guy listening to yeah, us. Yeah, and he probably speaks English too, because why else would he not be listening? <laughs> so thank you, Habibi. Habibi. <laughs> and I'll give you one more. The United Kingdom. Uh, all right. Uh, fun- in- thank you, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Oh, wait. He could be Irish, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to the thank you hour. Well, I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah. And, oh, you said Japan, too, right? Yeah. Arigato kazemas. Us. Is that how they say thank you also? Or is that how they say go, attack him? Us. Um, or that's, that's I'm going to attack It's kind of just him. like an affirmative. Like, I don't know what the literal translation is, but Kso. it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. I think it comes from martial arts culture, you know? Us. Yeah. That means I'm on my way. I think it, yeah, what does it mean? I don't know the literal translation of it. Next time I come over and you ask me how far I am, I'm going to say, I'm going to text you O-S-S-S-S-S-S. Oss. There's a U at the end. There is? Yeah. Oh, you're right, because it's, it's Japanese. Yeah. It's an unpronounced U. But yeah, thanks to uh, all the world of listeners and watchers. Yep. In and, it. And in it's. Yeah, especially you foreign guys. <laughs> Do, do us a solid and tell all your friends. Tell all your foreign friends. But if you're listening to us to learn English, I'm sorry because we make up a lot of words. Yeah, and we do. We purposefully fuck up our grammar. We have a lot of colloquial colloquialisms. Colloquialisms, too. idioms, idiomas, idiosyncratics. Oh, that, that, well, we should have been idiosyncratic. It's a pretty good one. It's too yeah. late now. It's too. It's too late. We're, we're a big episode twelve. Big tw- big episode twelve in. Two, we're still on two hands, baby. Big episode one, two, buckle my shoe, slap a Jew. Sometimes you just got to do every one of those things you said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Skrr. <laughs> Coke on my side. <laughs> Coke on the, lean on the side of my nuts. <laughs> yes, I don't know how it got there. It's just there. <laughs> I some my lean. All right. So I'm talking about a guide to hipster drinking. Step one. Oh, you're going first? Yeah, I'm going first. You're still magnanimous. I want to get it out the way. Sometimes you just got to. I want to get it out the I way. I way. <laughs> I missed it. I missed the button. That's okay. You can edit out like that second. Oh, no, that whole part is staying in. All right. I way. <laughs> look, look, who am I? Staying in. In it. Does that mean? In it. No, I was trying to do Aaron when he repeats stuff. Oh, staying in. And he yeah, always like over enunciates. Yeah. Because I noticed. Like, because, it's, like it's ridiculous or something. Because that bitch ass, apparently I say go right. Cause I, <laughs> go I'm, right. I'm talking about a movie. I'm like, I'm like, it's great. He always goes, go right. Go right. Punk ass. Yeah, so thanks for supporting us, Aaron. You're a good friend. You are a good friend, my man. We miss you. Sometimes I feel bad because I always shit on him. You know, I just realized... When I said that right now, it sounded like he's dead. Aaron's not dead. We just haven't seen him in a while. I just haven't seen you in a while because yeah. um, Justin's remembering to bring the mics. And so I don't have to go to your house to pick up the mics. 
<laughs> he can't come out shirtless. Yeah. Oh, I, last time I went over there, he came out with the shirt on because it was freezing outside. And I was like, I'm kind of sad you have a shirt on. And he's like, it's cold outside. I was like. <laughs> so, I asked him the other day too. I was like, when you gave Alex and Mike's, you went out shirtless. Why? He goes, yeah. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, how'd you know? I said, because you are, if I'm, you are always shirtless. Oh, uh, I think. I until think, I come over. I think that's actually what he said was like, uh, when I was like. Why do you have a shirt on or something? He was like, because I heard you guys made a bit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you made the bit out of it. Oops. <laughs> Shirtless ass. Oops. Oops. Coffee in my cup. Yeah. 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 Skirt. All right. So uh, the guide to hipster drinking. Step one, you got to be dressed fly. Okay. You can't leave the house looking busted. You have to look like a hobo that has a lot of money. <laughs> you got to have a beard, but it has to have lavish oils in it. Or, or, or just a stash, like a railroadsman's stash. Oh, yeah, but it has to be a badass stash. Yeah. Um, Can't be like this, like this little Frenchman stash I got. Put wax in it. Um, you got to have a, a cool hairdo, like a pompadour or something. Um, okay. <laughs> you also have to live like near an area that uh, used to be like a really shady downtown area, and it still kind of is, but now it's like gentrified because they made it nicer by being like, oh, it's art. Soto Sopa. Soto Sopa, exactly. South Park, if you don't know what we're talking about, go watch that episode. This is kind of a relative. Real believe. It's railroaded. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's step one. And maybe two, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I said that was step two, right? Optional. Thick rimmed glasses. Oh, yeah. You got to rock It's optional, your- though. Sometimes you don't need them. Oh, yeah. Uh, step three, have a dog. Um, but it has to be a, a well. Behave, dog, because you're going to take it places. <laughs> you're gonna, no, let's be honest. You're going to take it everywhere. <laughs> yep. So now, put that dog in your car. Have like a cool harness on it or maybe a, um, an outfit or something. Put it in your hatchback. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that he's not going to go flying around. Yep. And then um, <clears throat> put your capri pants on. Don't forget the capris. Oh, yeah. You can Google Maps for breweries if you live in areas such as Okay, well, I'm going to go local, but I'm sure they're fucking everywhere now. But, um, so we live in the DFW Metroplex. So me and Natalie like to go to Dallas or also to Fort Worth, you know, kind of like more in the closer to the city area. They have, there's a lot of them popping up. Yeah. And, um, they have really good beer because it's like microbrewery, you know, stuff. And I've talked about this before, but I really love the, uh... I get not gentrification, but I love that like everything is so artisanal now mm-hmm. because uh, so back, back way back when, right before the industrial rev- all that stuff, you know, all your stuff was like local, like your shoes were made by like the town shoemaker and stuff, you know? And so the quality was good because that's all he did. Right. And then in d- the industrial reg- revolution, uh, revelation, was, yeah, it was cool because it, you know, it made the, the costs for shoes go down. Everybody could have a bunch of shoes and, you know, our, it helped our population boom because blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm not a historian. I just watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> this guy just watches a lot of YouTube. You might actually be a historian. I might be. Yeah. And, bitch, I might be. Coffee yeah. in my cup. Yeah. yeah. So, but the point I'm making is that, so, yeah, it was cool that we had all these products and that it allowed us to get to where we are now. But, but I- what, what was lost? What was lost is like quality, uh, caring about your work, that like artisanal yeah. aspect of the the personal touch. Yeah, exactly. The personal touch of somebody who, like nowadays, you can go buy shoes. So if somebody is actually a shoemaker now, they're doing it for it's almost like a passion project. Like they love it, you know, kind of thing. So they might be have like the special touch of the wooden heel, you know, <laughs> that they. They ground down by hand and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They tanned the leather. I don't know what they do. I'm not a shoemaker. But the point is, is that like those are going to be like some special shoes mm-hmm. that uh, not everybody has. Like, you know, you know that you're the only one who has this pair of shoes. And that's a cool thing. It's, it's a cool thing having higher quality made by blah, 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 all that stuff. And the whole point of this rant is that I personally like going to breweries to, buy, to drink beer because... They have beers that aren't everywhere, for one thing. Like, you can only get them there. Like, um, you, uh, the Film Roll podcast is sponsored by Petticolis Brewery. Yes, sir. 
This is an unsponsored <clears throat> plug because we aren't sponsored by Pedicolas. But I wonder I, if I am by, def- by association. By default? Yeah, by default. Well, ask them and fucking bring me a growler or something. A growler would be cool. It is Sunday morning, though. But, you know, but we're, we're, we're not above that. We're yeah. alcoholics. Al- Maybe, but- alcoholics. <laughs> I'll, I'll, pro- <laughs> I'll probably bring some petty clothes on here. But cool. I, I know exactly what you mean because yeah. anytime we go there to hang out, um, to, the, to the poor house. Yeah, to the, yeah, to the poor house. Anytime- <laughs> I might want to be careful about how I say that. Anytime we go hang out at Petty Cola's Brewery, um, the people there are super cool. You can, and especially because we, we usually hang out in the back with, with the employees, so they have yeah. their own private taps back there or whatever. It tastes like it came straight from the tea. Straight from the tea, yeah. Straight from, from the beer tea, you know? Yeah, is, I should know this, but... Um... I wonder if there's a beer god. Oh, I his for, name for is, sure there's a wine there's a wine god in uh, His name is Beerus in Greek mythology. Beerus. Ah. <laughs> M&A reference. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dionysus is the god of wine. Yeah? Does that mean beer comes from her tit? <laughs> I don't know. That that might be all over the place, but <clears throat> I don't give a fuck right now. If it's a guy Scoop from his dick. Do you, you got beer in that dick? That reminds me of like when I tried Steel Reserve for the first time. <laughs> Such a good segue to it. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, because my friends were like, is it good? And I, 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 ha- I had to have this whole monologue where like I looked off into the distance and stuff. And I was like, it tastes like a horse was sick. And for whatever reason, it didn't have enough body fat until it had to eat a bunch of hops to try to get its body fat back. But little did it know that the hops were rotten. And so he ate all this hops and barley and, but it was like, it got wet. So it was like tainted, but he was so hungry. He didn't care. He just wanted to get his body fat up. Right. And then it fermented inside of him. Because he was so like sickly and ill, and it was so bad, and then he pissed <laughs> into a can, and that's what still reserve is. I'll give you that. <laughs> Why? Because I haven't used it. <laughs> it sounds like a monkey almost. <laughs> Does it? it? Kind of. Okay. Well, you're... <laughs> it's a cat though, just so you know. Yeah, a little more standard. I'll give give you a, a robot fap. Yeah. So that's what still reserve is. You know, but based on that on that description alone, I've never tried it, and I don't want to try it. Oh, I'm a hundred percent serious. But I say that. But now, uh, actually, when we went on tour, I was buying still reserve on purpose because I was like, I want to live like a hobo. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember you did say you said I want to buy the worst possible beer that I could, just the cheapest, dirtiest beer, and that's and I, I bought Bud Ice. Oh yeah, remember that? Yeah, and because it, it is it's strong, it's like really strong. It's like eight percent. Alcohol by volume, I think. Yeah. And it comes in these giant, like, 40s or 24 ounces. It's something. like a necessary evil. Yeah, and, and it's super cheap. So I was like, I was like, it's the most bang for your buck. <laughs> that, it's just such, like, a mathematical logic that you've applied to that situation. Yeah. <laughs> not saying it's good. Not saying you want to do it. But it's just like, you know what? Mathematically, this actually technically makes sense. But you don't really want to do yeah. it. If you're on tour, you're basically a hobo. And hobos drink hobo beer. And if so facto, I was drinking still reserve on purpose. It's disgusting. Even though I could afford whatever I wanted. I remember when I when I came on, on the <laughs> Patrick and Jeff were still in the RV. And I was like, guys, I bought beer. And Patrick's like, oh what? And I pulled up the butt ice. He goes, Oh God. <laughs> Speaking of Patrick, guess who I saw at a brewery one time? Oh yeah. It was, and it was uh completely um This is the Fort Worth one, right? Yeah, it was one of them in Fort Worth. I forgot which one it was. Was it Rar? I don't, I don't know if I've been to Rar. I don't think it was. That guy lives there. Oh, yeah, and he brought his dog. <laughs> He's also got a really big beard. And he has a beard. See, Pat, oh, man, I should have saved this for when Patrick comes on. <laughs> oh, shit. It's okay. Oh, well. Well, we could talk about it when Patrick's here. But, um, but, um, God, I hate when I see that. But, um, but, uh, but. But um, my point is, is that I like breweries because the beer is so delicious, and uh, like sometimes they'll they'll be at local 
bars on tap, but only oh, yeah. only select beers. So if you want to try their whole like, and they they always have like a wall of taps that are all different types of like IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPAs, quadruple IPAs. Yeah, the and works. Then, and then there's always something like really a uh, fucking fancy stout beer that is oh, like yeah. it's like this is a this is a cinnamon coffee dark. Yeah, and those are like the acquired taste. Like you're you're going there to be adventurous. Yeah, to try that. Oh no, actually, and another thing that I love that a lot of people hate is uh, sours. Oh, I love sours. Yeah. So basically, what a sour beer is, if you don't know, I don't either know. I don't know either. But I think it's like they left the bacteria in there instead of <laughs> taking it out. <laughs> like the the bacteria that makes the whatever. Yeah. But I'm into bacteria because. You drink kombucha. I like kombucha. I like uh, kimchi and like sauerkraut, and mm-hmm. I like probiotics. You know, so I'm pro. I'm pro bacteria. <laughs> so you stay away from antibiotics. Yeah, I eat dirt. I really do. Yeah, like unless I really have to. If I have some kind of like horrible infection, and they're like, we're either gonna amputate it, we're gonna give you uh, probiotics, or I mean antibiotics. And I'm like, I guess take the finger. Do I really need the finger? Cut the finger off. Yeah, you don't want to waste that kombucha you just drank. Yeah, I was like, I got nine more. <laughs> it's good. You're good to go. <laughs> I don't need it. Repl- okay, take one of my toes off, put it on my hand. I actually stole that joke from this dude that I work with. And so I got to give him a shout out. I think he listens. I don't know. But his name's Manny. Because uh, I, one time. Yay, Manny. Yeah, he, I think he like moved a tire and it hit me in the leg or something. And I was like, I was like, ow, my leg. And he was like, you don't need it. <laughs> He's like, you got another one. And it was funny when he said it because I was just like in, I wasn't in a jokey Jokerson mood. I was in like worky Workerson yeah. town. And uh, it just came out of nowhere. And I was like, that's a good one. He pulled the jokey jokes right out of you. Yeah, he joked me up real nice. Joke me up, fam. <laughs> Coffee in my cup. Yeah, yeah. Skirt. <laughs> you just love to skirt, don't you? <laughs> Sometimes you just got to skirt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't feel you, dog. I'll shit, dog. You. I see you in the right there. Shit, homeboy, you, you know all, that. I see you all up in there right there. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, hell. <laughs> yuck, yuck. I started getting uh, real southern there. Do these nuts count? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say that. Duh. Damn, that's a good one. I hate I hate when I stop podcasting just to try to make you laugh and say <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it's funny. This is all like not usable. This is staying in. Oh, shit. This is what we do. So back to breweries now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to breweries. So, yeah, that, that's what's cool about it. Okay. Also, a lot of them have really good food. So when, when they have special hours that you can go, very specific. And while you're there, a lot of times, oh, they do a lot of events where. Oh, yeah. Where it's like $10 to get in and you get a bracelet and you get three beers with that bracelet. And they'll just like mark off a beer every time you go uh, get it. <clears throat> but I always accidentally order the like strongest beer they have, and they give you half pours. Yeah, which is under, which is understandable. Yeah. And me and Natalie somehow always go late too, so they're gonna close in like an hour. So we're like, we gotta drink these three beers. We gotta like, slam them. Right so that's another fun thing about breweries is yeah. like going late and trying to finish your three. Craft beers as if they were Bud Lights. It's like a game. Chugging them down. Shit. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Man, and the it's kind of a double edged sword with stuff like that because they're they're really rich most of the time and yeah, they're and really full. full and heavy. So if you're if you're just like a trailer trash piece of shit uh, that tries to go to a brewery and drink it like you drink your keystones, yeah. it's not gonna work out very well for you. You gotta savor these. Yeah, they're they're for sommeliers, but of beer. Beer sommeliers, if that's mm. a thing. That's, I'll probably I've never been to small you, but you know who knows. I hear it's maybe nice I, this time of year. Like <laughs> 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 this freaking guy. Uh. Okay. So, <laughs> and um. Well, so during those little events, though, a lot of them, a lot of the ones I've been to that don't have their own like restaurant built in. Where they they make delicious foods. Like mm-hmm. I, I love Reuben sandwiches for some reason. I always get Reuben sandwiches when I go. But uh, a lot of them will have food trucks because that's also very hip- yeah. very hipster. Especially so, like the the indie breweries. Yeah. They always have the the indie uh, food trucks or the you know yeah. uh, small restaurants or whatever come by and cater. Which man, food trucks are the best. They're so good. Yeah. Like uh, I love those like taco trucks. Oh yeah, they're you know. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. And I'm Mexican, so that's saying something. It's a stamp of approval right there. Yeah. I weigh. I weigh. I, I weigh I indeed. Don't, I don't have to reiterate. So, okay, what, what other kind of beers do they have? That you, that okay. you can't really find. You're not going to find this from Anheuser-Busch, you know? Yeah. Um, so like IPA, stouts. Yeah. Uh, so they, they have a lot of different types of uh, like European sounding words that I don't know what they mean. Like Saison and uh, Heffenweiser mm-hmm. or Heffenweiss. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if I'm saying those words right or what they mean really, but I just know what they mean to my palate. Do, and, do lagers count? Yeah, they have they have a uh, like, you know, amber lagers, mm-hmm. <clears throat> stuff like that, and uh, oh, blondes. Every brewery has a blonde, mm-hmm. which uh, I don't. In my to my uh, to my taste palate, I don't really know things, but it seems like what a light beer would be if they actually gave a shit. That's mm-hmm. what that's what I think of a blonde. Yeah, it's like it's a light beer, but it's not really a light beer. It's still like packed with flavor and stuff, but it's just. It's just not so heavy. Do uh, chocolates count? Because like the chocolate beers or whatever? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure every single brewery I've ever had had like one beer that mm-hmm. it, if not it was a chocolate beer, it at least was like, it has chocolate notes. Oh, okay. Do these nuts count? <laughs> <laughs> you got it in. I just had to set it up somehow. You shoehorned that shit in there. <laughs> I forced that shit in there. You spit on your hand. <laughs> And I, I wet it up just enough, and I got it in there. I got it in. What is life? <laughs> Not this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what was I saying? <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, I took you off on that tangent just to make that joke. So, good beer, good food, and they're always chalked packed with people because um, it's kind of like a... Like a fancy thing, I guess. It's not really a fancy thing, but it's like... Well, they're events. You yeah. Know? It, th- most of them are events. Like, they do have a lot of events, and that's what will get a lot of people to go. Um, like, the one I saw Patrick at was a Halloween... Or no, it was a Star Wars thing. And so that's oh, why yeah. there was a costume competition for people and for dogs. Oh, yeah. And uh, because hipsters take their dogs everywhere. <laughs> And uh, get a dog, which I'm not against it. I'm just pointing it out because I actually love dogs. So I'm, you know, some people are like, Ugh, why is your dog at the table and stuff? I'm like, mm, I don't give a fuck. How about you just go somewhere else? Yeah. And then I kiss it on the mouth. <laughs> put your tongue in my mouth, dog. I hold its snout and then I just put my, <laughs> put my mouth over its nose and mouth. Yeah. Like you give it CPU. <laughs> and then I blow on it. <laughs> gotta get out of here, you little scamp. No. And so, oh yeah, so it was a Star Wars one. And I think, uh, uh, what's their dog's name again? I'm Sammy. Forgetting. Sammy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they, it was the little, uh, little think, one, right? I think it was like Chewbacca or something. <laughs> that might have been somebody else. Oh, that's so cute. I saw a couple of Yodas, which is funny because they have like mm-hmm. floppy ears and stuff. And, um, oh yeah, but so, there's also like the social aspect of it is mm-hmm. cool because like you can just meet. People who aren't like young idiots, like um, they just turn 21 and they want to go to like 7th Street and be crazy. Or if you live in Austin, 6th Street and be crazy. Are you live in New York, 5th Street and be crazy. For real? I think uh, 5th Avenue, something like that. Oh, something like, wait. Who knows yeah, anything about New York ever? Not me. Not me's guys. <laughs> not, not me's guys. Yeah. But so uh, like to me, going to bars... I'm the older I get, I just want to be able to get to the bar, get my drink, get back to my friends, be able to hear them, like you know, talk and stuff. No, oh, that's a big one, yeah. Yeah, if I if I want to like go dancing, I want to go to that place. But I don't want to go to a bar that's playing dance music so fucking loud I can't hear anybody. <clears throat> yeah, that's another big difference between just bars and uh, breweries. Is that yeah? The breweries are meant. It seems like they're really meant for. Um, social interaction you know because like the yeah. the guys that run the brewery they'll come out and they'll hang out with you while they're drinking yeah and it's like it's a it's like an event you know like you're there it's let's let's do this but at a bar it's like hey yo what you want huh yeah where's my tip like, at hey, huh? what are you bro- doing hey broski two heinekens yeah two, two heinekens yeah the bar- bartenders are like what i can't hear you yeah the bartenders are really shitty service because they have to deal with like Sh- really shitty people with shitty people all day so yeah but uh also, too, it just sounds better. Like, if you're, 
like if you go to work, this isn't a good reason, but it's just a point. If you go to work and people are like, oh, what'd you do this weekend? And you're like, oh, I went to a bar. And you're like, oh, I was okay. at a bar. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, I went to this brewery. And they're like, oh, I tell me more about it. Brewery. This guy sounds fancy. You see the difference? There's a major difference. He probably gets laid. The guy probably gets laid. He probably uses that mustache. He goes a to lot. breweries. <laughs> Hashtag mustad, m- must, mustard ride. <laughs> Hashtag mustard ride. Let's make that a thing, people. Must- Let's do it. What was I trying to say? Mustache ride? Let's let's dethrone Trump shutdown. What's wrong with Replace t- it with must, mustard ride. <laughs> I'll give Trump a mustard ride. <laughs> I just wish I knew what it meant, but it works for any situation. I don't know either. Like, hey, you wanna you wanna take this mustard ride? Yeah, or? I prefer ketchup. <laughs> you gonna give me a mustard ride or what? I'll give you a mustard ride up on this dill. There you go. There you go. Oh my god! I, I thought it was so disgusting, and this is a side rant. I thought it was so disgusting in um, the movie Grease. Whenever uh, when they're tell like, me about it, stud. No, not that part. Oh, whenever uh, they're talking to Rizzo, and uh, he's like, he's like, bite the weenie, whatever that means, and she goes relish, and makes this like gross face. Mm. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck did she just say? What are you doing, lady? What's wrong this, with you? This ninety nineteen fifties <clears throat> innuendo. Well, yeah, what's wrong with you? Yeah. She could have just said mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. She she basically did, Justin. Yeah. She basically did. I need a little bit more clarification though. Yeah. What what she was basically saying was she likes to slap pickle juice all over her BJs as she gives them. Sometimes no, I don't you need even, a little tang in your life. I don't even know if that's what she's saying, but the point is, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to the breweries. Uh I was actually pretty much summing them up, I think, you know. Just check them out. It's a fun thing to do with your friends. Get a group together and just go have some beer. If you like beer. I mean, I guess if you don't like beer, it probably wouldn't be that cool. Well, another cool thing about it is that there are what seems like thousands of different types of beer. So if you don't like beer or if you don't like the beer that you've tried, you probably had like, you know, Natty or whatever, you piece of trash. Go to a brewery and see what other kind of flavor of beers they have because they have really, really weird ones. If you don't like beer, it's because you don't know what you like, and you need to be told. Let us tell you what it is that you like. Well, we went to a brewery in Florida when we were on the first tour, and uh, I think it's Orlando Brewery, and uh, they had a drink called the Ron Burgundy, and it was a uh, what was it? Black Panther. <clears throat> it was no, it was a it was a brand, they should have that one too. It was a brown and an amber, and that you see them pour them both, and then they mix them together. Oh, and that's cool. It was one of the best things I've ever had. So they have cool experimental stuff like that, too. Fancy. Very fancy. I love mansplaining. I was just saying, if you don't like beer, then you just don't know what you like, and you need to be told. Allow us to mansplain this to you. Beer is good. Try other types of beers. You will like this beer. Yeah, I mean, the whole world can't be wrong. <laughs> Actually, yeah, here it's pretty good. I feel like beer might be the the most popular beverage of all time. Yeah, water's got nothing on it. Well, it's a necessity. Necessitate these nuts. <laughs> oh man, I should have finished it. Oops, oops. I did it for you. I'll finish what you start. Cool arrow. <laughs> That's my Indian name. I don't know why I got so aggressive all of a sudden. I don't know. Oh, you yeah. know what you need? You need a nice beer. Beer. Micro brood. Oh, but so <laughs> this is just one one last finishing thought that I just thought of, a little closing thought. I've I've seen so many people at breweries that I haven't seen in forever. Oh yeah. That I know. Yeah. And the reason why I think is because uh it's not such a so this is a big metroplex, right? So like people that I went to high school with, like I haven't seen any of them in like ten years or something. Yeah. But I saw a dude I went to high school with at a brewery. There you go. And I think it's because cool people just go to breweries, and it's like a more smaller microcosm of Mm -hmm. people. Microcosm at a microbrewery. Yeah. So come on up and step on down to the brewery. To the tap room. To the tap room. And get some yummy beers. Step five, profit. And on that note, oh, step five, profit. On that note, we'll be moving into Justin's interest, because I say so, unless you have any final thoughts. 
about breweries? Uh, I like beer. <clears throat> Great. Thanks. So let's move on. Um, Dick and Doherty. Dick, um, <laughs> Dick and Doherty. Uh, Marty and the Doc. Sorry, the Doc and Marty. Nick is forty. Yeah, so we're talking about <clears throat> Morty. We're talking about Rick and Morty today, my man, my manses. All of all of our people out there in the Netherlands and Japan and Switzerland and uh, Iran. If you, like, if you like America TV show, uh, animation style, go watch Dick and Morty. Go watch it. Rick and Morty, sorry. So um, I wish I'd watched this sooner, but I, I just gotten into it. I think it was this. Uh, it was a little, oh man, it might have been like late last year or mid last year. Brandon from Film World got me into it. And it is one of the greatest shows. Not just cartoons. One of the greatest shows that I've ever seen. Yeah, just the level of humor, the level of writing. Yeah. What really got me thinking about this is, so the whole week I was thinking, which, what's my interest going to be? And basically the whole week I've been on Reddit, just, you know, and I'm subscribed to the uh, Rick and Morty subreddit. And the whole time I was like, man, I really wish season four would come out already. Man, I wish, I think that's when the news dropped too, that season four might not even premiere until 2019. So I'm just like, need some more Rick and Morty, need some more Rick and Morty. So that's all I've Damn. been thinking about really. So I want some more Rick and Morty. So season three was brilliant, I thought. Um, it's one of those shows where each season gets better and better, you know? Yeah. I was kind of sad with like the last few episodes. Mm-hmm. It was still really good, but um, I just felt like uh, the very beginning of season three was just so good. And then um, it just kind of set the bar too high. You oh, know? you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was the the... Ending of the season was still good, but I was just kind of expecting more, I think. Were you expecting like a season two? Oh, spoilers. Spoilers ahead, by the way. So oh, three, shit. two, one. Spoilers. Um, so like this, a cliffhanger. He, oh, yeah. When season two, when Rick basically goes to prison, like that is a high, high note to end on. Yeah. And I'm wondering if maybe you were, if that's kind of what you were reeling from. I wasn't necessarily expecting like something like that, mm-hmm. but. Um, I just thought that uh, the I mean the season finale did feel just like an episode. It didn't feel at all like a season finale. That makes sense in any way, you know. Yeah, it it just felt like kind of an afterthought. And uh, I I remember reading some like conspiracy theories of that um, they weren't going to end it off like that originally, but mm-hmm. then something happened with the production, or I don't know. But I don't know if any of that's true or not. That's a good segue to what else I was going to say is like the fan theories. And oh the my conspiracy God. theories. There's so and, many fan yeah, theories. The, the philosophical nature of the show, just in general. Like, there, there are so many theories that um, what happens in this episode actually takes place in uh, an alternate universe because of uh, this uh, salt shaker in the kitchen is actually uh, not where it's supposed to be. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are so many things like that. Um, like, like you were saying, that the season wasn't supposed, to, possibly wasn't supposed to end there. Um, there was, uh, there was another one that I've heard that ever since season two, whenever they switch timeline or, well, that's what, that's the theories that they switch timelines because, uh, it has something to do with these glowing rocks or whatever. But when Mr. Poopy butthole shows up and he's, you know, Rick is like, I've known him all my life or whatever. And, you know, of course we've never seen him before. So it's like, now hold on a second. This is a different universe because the glowing rocks are here, but they're supposed to be here. And uh, uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole is actually a member of the family and this and this and this, but we never heard of him before. Uh-huh. And it's like, stop, stop trying to theorize on what is, what's possibly happening and just enjoy the show for what it is. Just a great show. Yeah. But it's, it's such it's a- It's still fun to think about though. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's such a good show that it spawns all these crazy theories about what is actually going on and because they play with different like multiverses and different uh timelines and whatnot there's an infinite number of of realities that any one of these episodes can take place in yeah it's genius it it, these episodes there's so much depth to each one of them too because you also never even know like what what is going on like what reality (laughs) like what what specific rick and morty are you even like yeah, watching right now. Yeah, I, I think the the perfect culmination <clears throat> uh, for that line of thinking was the uh, the Rick Lantis mix up. Whenever they uh, the entire uh, yeah. episode takes place on uh, the uh, uh, shit, what's it called? I forgot the the Rick and Morty planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, uh, 
There's a whole the planet, no, there, not the Federation. There's a whole planet where it's only Ricks and Mortys yeah. from all the universes. Yeah, I, I completely forget what it's called, but the whole episode takes place there. So um, you get to meet all these other different variations of Rick and Morty, and then, and then it's. It's just Morty's th- killing Morty's. It's just Morty's killing Morty's. <laughs> There's just so many uh, uh, social commentaries, like different tiers of jobs that the Ricks have, even though they all have the same amount of intelligence. You know, it's yeah. like different social classes and uh, the Morty's having to constantly be sidekicks, not having to, not being able to be their own person. It's yeah, and that even that is like a freaking crazy um, look into life a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, you know Rick is a super genius, and then you know you you force him to be a a, jan- worker, a janitor or a, janitor, or a factory yeah. worker, you know, and it leads to this like existential crisis of just you know a life of unhappiness. You're just punching a card and stuff, you know. <clears throat> yeah, there's a there's a the Rick that um, shoots his boss and takes his simple Rick hostage, and uh, he's what the the. Swat or talking to him or something. He's like, he's like, I'm a Rick. He's like, you think I'm gonna fall for that? We're all Ricks. He's like, I might be smarter than all of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it, sometimes it's a little mind bottling. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, is your mind trapped in a bottle? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Each it's like each episode. Well, it's not like each episode. Every single episode has some sort of commentary on on social stigmas and and stuff like that. And I think that's that's. A super super cool thing, because the show itself, just on the surface level, is really good. If you first just get into it, you can just watch it for what it is and just enjoy it. But then, when you actually really start to analyze certain aspects of it, you realize that you know there's so much depth there, and there's a lot of hidden meaning. Yeah. Um, without theorizing and, and you know going into uh, conspiracy theories or whatever, but there really is there, there's like there's a philosophical underlining that each episode and the show itself is is based on. Yeah. And it's cool to it's almost like watching a, a Disney movie with 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 your kid cuz you know they're going to love it for the animation for the story or whatever. But you realize that there's some but some I, innuendos in there and you I, realize that there's some stuff that's aimed just at adults, you know? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say but don't watch Rick and Morty with your kid, please. Yeah, don't watch Rick and Morty <laughs> with your kid. Yeah. Um and then god, the it's it's so cool how they have made possibly the most unlikable character ever extremely likable because everybody yeah. loves rick sanchez but rick sanchez is a piece of shit human and and they always make him uh seem like more more and more like he uh loves morty but then you never really know because his motives are so clouded yeah I, i'm so doing he, it for the sauce morty i did it all for the sauce so you can't even tell <laughs> that ep- the premiere when <laughs> he goes the only reason i brought you back is so your mom wouldn't kick me out oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it, but i mean you know but if you look at his actions and whatnot, you can see that he does care about him. But you see, there's there's <laughs> there's these. It's multi layered. There's so many different layers that you could that you could break through, and you'd still find another damn layer. I just want you to care if I run out of the room yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Morty, you've better you barely touched your pills. Pill brulee. Um, I think my f- my favorite episode ever is the one where they introduce Mister Poopy Butthole with oh, yeah. uh, uh, with all the characters. No, uh, stop yeah. remembering. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> Wait, Beth, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, ghost in a jar, and you have uh, Hammerai, the, the samurai with ham all over him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and even like even that episode itself, it, not only is it big in terms of, of themes and kind of just the story in general, but big in terms of characters, too. The mm-hmm. amount of characters that they were able to throw on that screen and also give... They gave a life to each one of them. Yeah, it's like they all had a, a serious impact on the story and on the character and on the main character's lives. Yeah, too. and it was all fabricated. Everything was yeah. Every single thing was fabricated. And then I, I started thinking too, um, when, like whenever they started actually killing the worms, and how like Beth would be like, "I've but I've known her my entire life." And it was, you know, she's been a, she's actually just a worm or whatever, yeah. a space worm. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine that. Imagine like somebody walks in a room and and uh, shoots your your best friend in the face. And you're like, what the hell? But he turns out to be a worm. Yeah, yeah. that just invaded your mind ten seconds ago. Yeah, like, and you the find psycholog- out that all, all your memories are just they were all faked. Dang, like the psychological implications. And and, and think about it. And think, think about it. That's why it's like almost every episode that goes on, Morty gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah, <laughs> poor kid. Oh, the episode where uh, he finds all the memories. 
Oh yeah, the, uh, the Morty's mind blowers. Yeah, he t- he took he took it. <laughs> Rick took out all the bad memories of him, and not not just the bad memories that Morty experienced, but the bad but any like there was one where uh, Morty beat Rick in checkers, so he took oh, that memory yeah. out. <laughs> you don't want to take it for granted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you saying like, granted? Yeah, what are you a cave person? <laughs> See, like it's yeah, it's stuff. It's stuff like that. Um, there's so many moments in the show too, where it's like, man, th- this this line that they're crossing, it's that's a hard line to cross. And it's <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of which one was the worst one. Oh man, um, the whirly Durly. Whenever Rick takes Jerry to that place oh, yeah. Yeah, where they can't die, and then uh-huh. when the bubble, like, there's those kids running around oh, shooting each God. other, and then the bubble goes down, that and he's sh- so morbid, and he shoots his sister, and he's like. Sarah, yeah, I was like, "Oh my god, this is so dark." I know, that was, yeah, that was rough. They, man, they they really push those boundaries as far as they possibly can. But it's, it, I don't think it's ever been done in bad taste. Even well, though I feel terrible about it, that's also one of the points I was trying to make with uh, when I was talking about anime. Mm-hmm. Was that like you can get away with so much more in an animated world? Yeah, that you can't if it was like. Uh, in real life, you know, <clears throat> like gore. Yeah, like I hate gore. I don't like scary movies where it's just like hack and slash. <laughs> but like, I mean, I might be a tad bit like messed up or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think it's kind of funny. Uh, if it's a a comedic head exploding in a yeah, in it like, like you're like, hey buddy, we can go home now or something to yeah. to to your friend. And then, like, somebody shoots him in the head with a, oh with a laser God. and his head explodes. I think it's funny <laughs> if it's, like, comedically timed right. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's about the, uh, the, uh, uh, the meaning, the intention. What's the intention behind yeah. actually doing this? Is it uh, for comedic purposes or, or whatever? But the, another cool thing about Rick and Morty is that that line is kind of blurred. Because you know they're trying to make you feel bad because this is not just a simple comedy show. This is a show that's, that's going to push those boundaries and... and yeah. Test you as a viewer, but it's also for comedy reasons too. Comedy testies. I think they, uh, I think both. they just got together the perfect writing staff and, and creators to to put together a show that has layers upon layers upon layers of meaning, but is also bright and uh, incredibly pleasing to look at and watch. You know, and yeah. it's still and it's hilarious too. And the method acting. Oh my god, when, yeah. When Rick got drunk to record. That, I think that's my favorite episode of the third season. <laughs> Aloha means yeah. does doesn't matter what it means. <laughs> Dude. Uh, One yeah. million ants. <laughs> I thought it was just Wiggly Turd Man. <laughs> yeah. On specific on God that, damn. God damn. That's actually where we got that sound bite from. Specific on that episode, Justin Roiland, who voices, uh, I don't know, 99% of the damn cast, uh, got hammered. D- Dan Harmon, who's the co-creator, um, he, t- he told Justin Roiland to just get shit face because Rick gets blackout drunk in that episode. So he gets super damn drunk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and like the performance is, is it's perfect. Like, you can tell... Like Rick is drunker than you've ever seen him because he's drunk yeah, in like seventy five percent of the show. You know, I think even more. Yeah, you're right. Probably more. He, he's like always drunk. That's true. He, he's he's a high functioning alcoholic. But this is yeah, the first su- super genius. Alcoholic. This is the first time that you hear him like really slurring those words and uh, his train of thought just just collapses at times. You know, and uh, <laughs> and it's hilarious too how. They had like, the, 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 what are they called again? The Vindicators. It's oh, yeah. how the, I was the, thinking the, about it this whole yeah, time. The Vindicators have the Revengers. Yeah, they have yeah. like their, their super villains or whatever that they're, that they're constantly fighting and saving the universe from. But the, their ultimate villain is Rick himself when he's blackout drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Yeah. He's, he's such a great character. It's true for the whole show, actually, if you think about it. He could just end the whole world if he wanted to. Rick is the worst type of person that there is because. God, man, he he broke up the family. He is this. Well, he's one of the biggest reasons why Beth and Jerry divorced in the first place. He is the main reason that Morty is so messed up. Uh, 
be- oh my god, Summer! Remember whenever they have uh, they go into the uh, the Mad Max universe <laughs> and Summer? She's, oh yeah, she's, she's, she's like, like going, dating. Yeah, she's trying to kill her. Yeah, she's dating one of the the, the murderers there, and she's trying to kill everybody. <laughs> and when it, okay, remember whenever um, the uh, whoever the leader is of that 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 group. Uh, she shoots out his his tire when she's driving when he's driving towards her, and he's like bleeding and he's crawling towards her, and he's like, "Please kill me." And she's like, and "She's like, okay, but not because you asked me to." Yeah, <laughs> she blows his head off. Yeah, and this is all caused by Rick. So he is he is the worst type of person that, that there is. He he's he's like the physical embodiment of cancer. He just infects everything around him. And th- and then at the end when they're having like marital problems. Oh yeah. Sorry, I didn't I didn't log all my murders down on my murder log. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so good. But you still like you still like the character, you know? <laughs> when he takes off the helmet and she's like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Is it the is it the mustache? It's got that tiny <laughs> yeah. little mustache. Because I can shave it. Oh God. Yeah. Um and that's not even the I, I, we're really diving into season three, but like because that's just at the forefront of my memory. And it's, I think it's the best season overall. I, I think just the the sheer variety of what they were able to do in season three. Fucking kinda, Pickle Rick. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We didn't even mention Pickle Rick, which became a, one of the biggest memes ever. I'm Pickle Rick. But, but yeah. Um, I, I specifically loved it because uh, at the very beginning of it, uh, right, when, right when he like falls off of the, off of the table mm-hmm. as in pickle form, I was like, uh, here we go. I was like, this is so uh, cliche. Like, like, I was thinking he was gonna, uh, he was gonna be stuck as a pickle, and he was just gonna like be taken all around, and then like, oh yeah, picked up by a bird, oh, and like, and the whole episode was gonna be that. You could not have been more wrong. And then he's gonna somehow end up back where he was when yeah. they get back. Yeah, and I was completely wrong. <laughs> In the best possible way. Yeah, but that's why that's what I'm talking about. It's like beautiful writing because there's so many archetypes that we've seen over and over again in media that at a at a certain point uh when we see something like like that it just you expect something to happen yeah it was a red flag of writing of like uh i've seen this before i know exactly what's gonna happen and i'm like uh this is lame that they did that but then they go he's like i'm a super genius and then he starts like (laughs) building a body out of Roach parts and rat parts and yeah, and then he has like an exoskeleton and then he freaking kills like a whole mafia <laughs> group and he fights Jaguar, who's uh, uh Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo, yeah, Machete, yeah. He's like he's like I've never died before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. so man, that's, that's the cool thing about it is that they take you in such different directions. And uh, even season one was, I think season one was a lot more tame compared to season two and three, but. I mean, even then with uh, Scary Terry. Oh, oh yeah. Bitch. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> just like yeah, stuff like I that. I don't cool. think they knew like where exactly it was going to go. Mm-hmm. You they know? were just having fun with it. Yeah. And then after after season one, then they're like, man, this is like really we're something. Step our game up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think one of my favorite things about it too is just the the alien stuff that they have. Like the the money is like the Blimflarks and they have like the Google uh, yeah. Google Borps and like just the... Yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> the dumbest names. Um, who was the... Google, uh, Google Blurps. Yeah, the... Uh, uh, what was the, the Plutonian's name? It was like like uh, Mr. Fli- Mr. Flippy Nips. Or <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> like, you know, they just have the most fun just with these stupid names. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, oh, man, the... Uh, the interdimensional cable episodes. Have you ever seen anything like? I've never seen anything like that before. Where it's it's just like, <laughs> apparently the way they did it, Justin Roiland would get in the booth and the writers would just pitch him an idea right there on the spot, just a random thing like, oh, the these are they're hamsters that live in people's butts, and he would just he would just run with it, like he would create the story just like right there on the spot. And they would take the funniest ones and send them to the animators, and the animators would have to animate those those situations. Wow. Like these weren't written down or anything. These weren't anything that they came up with. It's just like, okay, so there's two brothers, and they're running from an asteroid. <laughs> it's like two brothers. <laughs> he would create the story right there on the spot. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they would send those off to the animators, and that's how they create the episode. But it's just it's just them getting in the booth, making the dumbest jokes that they possibly can, and putting that all together. And that's wow. why those episodes are so. There's such like a like a sporadic random element to those oh, because yeah. they're they are inherently sporadic and, and random. That makes sense. There is something very um, like you're chilling with your buddies, yeah. And then there's like a side rant, and then just come. 
the like storyline takes a complete left turn, you know? Yeah. And just goes off in a different direction. We got fake doors. What are you worried about? <laughs> and it was all a dream. Oh, Detective Baby Legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't run. <laughs> but the personal space guy. That was so sad. To take the baby legs. Yeah, when he like. He, I, he I guess I do need a I need a partner. <laughs> Here I go. This is me running. <laughs> <laughs> Here I come, baby legs. I'm regular legs. Yeah, and then the. Uh, uh, I, I guess that's that's pretty much it. But that's like, it it's like the these episode ideas come from the mind of of a man who is schizophrenic but is sane enough to put everything down in a compelling way you know he's schizophrenic it seems like it oh because <laughs> like the ideas he comes up with or the ideas they come up with because i mean they have a full writing staff behind them but the show really is driven by justin roiland the guy who voices rick and morty and 99 yeah. percent of the damn cast yeah i feel like he is rick yeah he's, he i'm sure he's genius in some ways he might be a little on the spectrum in some other ways <laughs> yeah yeah a little touched i think but that's that's the that's the brilliance of it is that, you know, you you meld these two opposing dichotomies. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think a lot of people were kind of upset with season three. I think a lot of people expected more, but I didn't see any of season three coming. And to me, that's that's the mark of a show that's growing. Yeah, and that's really pushing its own boundaries. And I feel like the episode with. Uh... The the Rick and Morty planet. Um, oh, they, it's and it's called the up, Citadel, by the way. I remember now. The Citadel. Citadel of Ricks. Um. Oh yeah, I, I feel like they set up like a nice arc that I that I'm ready for, uh, like a little mini saga for for next season. Evil Morty. Yeah, with Evil Morty in charge of the. He just won mm-hmm. the presidency or whatever, whatever it is. And now it's time for a uh, uh, what do you say? Cold calculated speech. Over sinister overtones. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and he kills all the all the rickles. Yeah. A speech about power. <laughs> Whatever he says. It's just so stupid. It's dumb. <laughs> it's so stupid. But it's funny because it's true. Yeah. It's cool that they brought him back because remember he was in season two. He was controlling evil Rick. Remember he was the eye patch Morty. Oh really? That's him. Yeah. Oh I didn't I didn't connect the mm-hmm. two. Yeah. Uh, the the file, <laughs> the file that um uh. Uh, secret Rick, <laughs> whatever it gives to uh, <laughs> the other Morty. <laughs> it's just gonna get real, real it's hard. So confusing. This, yeah, to describe. It, yeah, he's like, uh, um, he's like secretive Rick, and he gives he gives a file to uh, uh, to campaign manager Morty because <laughs> campaign manager Morty managed uh, <laughs> evil Morty's campaign, who's now <laughs> President Morty. <laughs> and then whenever he finally looks at at the file. It's uh, it turns out to be Evil Morty with the eye patch. Uh, who was actually eye patch Morty? I, yeah, I do remember that. No. <laughs> who controls Evil Rick? Yeah. <laughs> this, you see, I I wonder if they made that episode just to mess with people who are trying to describe that episode. In that file, you find out that the President Morty is actually Evil Morty from season two. Yeah. So like, that's a cool thing they bring those characters like that could go anywhere. Yeah. I would love to see how that planet would be run. By an evil genius Morty, and then on on another note though, like I feel like that could be like a whole mini saga, mm-hmm. and then I feel like they could also just like just wipe it up in like one little, not even sewed, but like a piece of an episode, mm-hmm. like uh, like episode one happens and and everybody's expecting them to like go somewhere with that. Mm-hmm. The episode is completely random, and at the very end. Uh, it just shows like, uh, like oh, President Morty, and then like poof, gets hit by a spaceship, and then oh, he's yeah. just dead. It, it could be just and like because like, they do stuff like that. Where it, it's like, it could be like uh, the opener for season one. It literally starts off with, and that's how I escaped from space prison. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like they just wipe that whole plot line clean. But you yeah. know, then you actually see how he escapes or whatever. But they, you don't have to actually. Uh, describe what happened or, or show what happened. You could just, boop, you know, yeah, the Szechuan sauce, yeah. But yeah, they could just wipe that storyline completely clean, just just like that, and yeah. and that would be the funniest thing about it. And I, I know we talked about the Szechuan sauce already, but that just shows you how culturally relevant, like how ginormous of a following this show has. Yeah, that it, it caused riots <laughs> and dumbasses, <laughs> silly Mickey D's, if you, if Mickey you, D's nuts. <laughs> if you think about the joke too, the joke itself, in and of itself, is 
just nonsensical. It's nonsense. Yeah, it's just completely random. He's like, like, what is Szechuan sauce? It's like, like, I'm, yeah, it's from when uh, Mulan uh, came out and uh, I just, uh, I, I didn't get to eat it. So. He's like, I'm doing this for the Szechuan sauce. This has always been about the sauce, Morty. The yeah. delicious sauce. Yeah. It, that, it, that joke itself completely undermines the entire show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, he's not doing this for his family. He's not, you know, it's not for the adventures. It's for the sauce. And that's, that's another funny thing about it. You, you think the, the joke about uh, how Rick became the way he ultimately is about his daughter dying and, yeah. and whatnot turns out to be completely untrue. Yeah, it's he like, just made it up yeah, with, it's his, like, with his powerful mind. Yeah, th- wherever you think the show's going to go, it's going to go the other way. They're going to slap you in the face and be like, idiot. And they still haven't given him a real origin story. I don't think they ever will. I yeah. mean, they could do that in every single season, and I would believe it up until the point where they show me it wasn't true. Yeah. You know? And until season 10 where you're like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm on to you. And then they tell you the real story, but then they're like, eyebrow raise, is it really? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, Come get your fake doors. Remember uh, Zorpa Zorpa Field? Mm-mm. Like, I don't remember that. You don't? He's like, Mm-mm. he's like John, you white bread milk toast bitch. It's like, give me my effing enchiladas. I'm glad that it's not that long yet. So whenever season four comes out, we'll probably binge the all three of the first seasons. Yeah, you f- you'll finish all those in like four hours, something like that. <laughs> Because they're not. And oh, that's another cool. Me and Natalie are professional bingers now. That's another cool thing about the show. I think the reason why it seems so schizophrenic and it's there's so each episode is so content packed is because the creators used to make those uh, like eleven minute shorts or whatever. So they mm. had to pack a lot. They had to uh, to really condense storylines. You know what I mean? To to make them fit. But now they're doing this times two, and I think that's why. They're still so content packed, but they're yeah, they're like we have so much time to work with. Yeah, I know. It's like holy shit, we have double the time to work with a whole twenty four minutes. But I think they still build them like two eleven minute episodes that they push together, and they're still so they're so heavy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Such a great show. Yeah, go watch Rick and Morty if you haven't already. If you don't like it, lose my number. Lose my number. If you haven't figured out too, Rick and Morty is based on the Doc and Marty from Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, especially the OG's man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the shaky guy. <laughs> Michael J. Fox. Mm-hmm. Because he really does kind of do that, like, like, oh, man, Doc. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Oh, come on, Doc. Oh, Rick. That's kind of his face too. Like he does the like, like the frantic like. Oh. I love the, the toxin episode when he becomes psychopath Morty. Remember mm. that mm. when they remove the toxins and he becomes the Wolf of Wall Street, basically. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, ha ha, world's best, world's best grandpa. That's not just a coffee mug for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's walking off, a football comes and he catches it and throws it back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, so good. That one, that one made me really think about <laughs> life in general. Yeah. And even, even that's weird to think about. super heavy, too, because... Which one of them is the real one? Yeah, and somewhere exactly. At, somewhere in the middle. And what, what is considered the toxic part of you, to your perspective? Because the toxic part to Rick was the loving aspect, you know what I mean? The loving, angry aspect, the oh, emotional yeah. aspect yeah. there. And the toxic part to Morty was the good part of him. Because yeah. after that, he was just the shittiest type of person that there, that there could possibly be. Yeah. You know? Hostile takeover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tiny Rick. <laughs> oh, man. I forgot. Let me out. Let me out. Just the, in general, the one-liners, too, that respond from this. Mm-hmm. Wubba lubba dub dub. And that's the way the news goes. That's, oh, yeah. If you haven't gotten that yet, that's the way the news goes. That's where we get it from. Go check it out. Go catch it. Yeah, do that. Catch it in your faces. So, uh, do you have any final thoughts on that shit? <laughs> no. I just love it. Sorry for your ear holes that Justin was just so unprofessional with his clearing of throat. Um-a-lub-a-dub-dub. Next time you clear your throat, do it in my ear, not in the mic. Would you like me to do it louder? No. Skr. Coffee in my cup. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sitting in a chair. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know why. Skr. So, Justin, 
Tell me. Do we get any emails or voicey recordings or anything like that this week? My man. My boy. My ride or die. My bottom bitch. Yes, we did. That's me, I guess. We got two of them. So, I don't know if I should admit to or claim that title. Hey, bottom bitch, little bitch fingers. That's why we're on the podcast together. You want to hear a... Um, well, they're actually both kind of angry. That's a good thing. So we got one from Amanda who uh, we call... Angle what? We, we called her out last, uh, last episode. And she decided to call in and, sit in and do something about it. So congrats, Amanda. Good job. You did it. You made it. Okay, I'm listening to this week's podcast a little bit late, two days late, but I see that you are calling me out on not being a true supporter, because after every episode I listen to, I usually text Justin, because I don't have Alex's number, otherwise I would text him too. Lose his number. Um, You have Natalie's number. Also, on that, uh, whatever game it was, the scary game, Evo still has it, so Maybe I should just come over and see if Alex could beat it all by himself. Um, on that, that note, I'm going to go back to my desk and I'm going to listen to the rest of the podcast. Keep it up. Is she, is she challenging? It's a my, call out, bitch. She challenging my chops as a gamer. You got called out, scary ass. Does she not know that I've been doing gaming since I've been uh, shitting green? <laughs> what the hell? Let's do it. That's bonus content right there. For I'm, I'm so happy now because I thought that I would never, ever see the day that I get to see the PT because uh, I thought it was all gone forever. In, and I'm right there with you. I didn't realize that he still had it and he could still play it. And how, how's he our friend? And he, he just, he didn't tell us. I think he's, he's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he's an ebb hole. And that's okay. So that's a call out for you. My ho ass. All right. So you got to play it. You got to be scared with us. You got to understand why it's so scary. Look at that lady. I'm going to get drunk and turn all the lights off. Oh, dude, that's great. Let's go get drunk and play this game in the dark. Oh, we could put it as our uh, extra content. We can uh, set, up bonus, a, set up the camera or something. Bonus content right there, my man. Some bonus. Hey, I wonder if they have it for- Jonas. I wonder if I can play it on the computer too. What? PT. I wonder if someone's ported it over. And... Barnum and Bailey. Yeah. Maybe. Probably. Let's do it. Bonus content for you guys. Check Pirate Bay. Here's the- uh, Check Pirate Bay. Here's uh, the second voice we got. Hey, so I'm a little drunk right now, but <laughs> best time to call. I was just thinking about your podcast, watching this Dave Chappelle fucking <laughs> Netflix special. And when you talk about bottom bitch, did you fucking watch the Dave Chappelle special and talk about bottom bitches? Because I was like, oh shit, fucking little bitch fingers talking about bottom bitches. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't even seen Dave Chappelle's. What he? You have you seen it? Yeah, I don't remember that part. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you did you steal from? No, Dave I, Chappelle. I said it on on last episode. We were watching the Deuce, and one of the pimps was talking to one of his hoes, and he's like, "You my bottom bitch." He's like, "I'd never leave you." She's like, "Thanks, Daddy." That's real. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go watch Dave Chappelle's special now, and I'm gonna see see if, see if my reference is on there. He probably took that from me. I'm gonna. See. Oh, because oh, he listens to this podcast. He listens to it. Maybe. Yeah. That's what, that's what happened. Caller. Dave Chappelle took the reference from me. <laughs> Caller. I hardly know her. Which I took it from The Deuce. Which Man. is a great show. Really good show. Those are both really good calls. I especially like the drunk one. Yeah. <laughs> you can drunk dial us anytime. That's the best time to call us. And um, I put the phone, if you have an iPhone, I put it in the show notes. So if you're listening to the episode, you just click on the description. And the phone number is right there. You can click it and it will automatically call. We're making it as easy as possible for you to call in. No because effort. Because we like to hear your takes, your steaming takes on what we have to say. <laughs> steaming hot takes. Yeah, if you want to call us out because we said something out of turn that isn't true, please do so. Correct our asses. Because uh, most of the time, I spout shit that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> like, I only have a super sub- cursory level knowledge on the subject and that entitles me to talk about it like i know everything <laughs> yep that's what the show is all about this is all we're talking about today and that's what friendship's all about we talk about shit we don't know anything about yeah that's why we're idiosyncratic yep you got it <clears throat> also if you don't want to leave us a voicemail you can email us at idiotsyncraticpodcast 
at gmail.com. Yeah, use your written words instead of your voice words. Yeah, sometimes you need to. But if you're drunk, call us again. <laughs> yeah, or oh, do you think it'd be funny if we got a drunk email? Oh, do you think oh that'd be cool. We'd oh, be able we wouldn't to tell? be able to read it. Oh, shit. We won't be able to read it. Uh, okay, think in this day and age, how okay. everybody misspells everything when they're not drunk. If you're drunk, handwrite us a note and then photocopy it and email it to us, and we'll try to read it. I want you to do the most effort possible. And draw us a picture. Yep. But it can't be cock and balls. <laughs> That's probably all we'll get. Yeah. Nice Coffee in my cup. You, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. Skirt. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's all we have for today, huh? <laughs> Check us out on uh, the YouTube's. If I mean, mm-hmm. I guess you guys already are. Subscribe you, if you haven't. You guys subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell. The people who are only listening to the, uh, these voices can go ahead and what can they do? Follow us. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe and shit. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, subscribe. Uh, give us give us a review. Give us a star rating. We want to get past 800 million five-star ratings so we're getting there but we need your help doing that because i can't write all the fake reviews myself we're we're getting close we're only like 79 million yeah we don't we don't do the math here it's not the math podcast this is the idiosyncratic podcast where if you listen you rate us five stars write a review on there put when you're drunk write a review on there Uh, (laughs) drink reviews yeah drink reviews yeah i like them because Burp, Morty. <laughs> put put your burps in there whenever you burp. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get yeah. the best Rick impression we can to call in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 Skirt. Coffee in my cup. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do, uh, okay, so we're doing hashtag uh, mustard ride, hashtag skirt, and let's do hashtag yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Hashtag yeah, yeah. And let's- also, don't forget to tell your friends, guys. You are our biggest... Um, Way of growing is by spreading us around. Yep. Like the flu that's been going around. You've been coughing on your coworkers. You need to cough us on your coworkers. You need to infect them with laughter and love and peace and harmony <clears throat> and fucking cool shit. Okay. Yep. Okay. You need to infect them with little bitch fingers and bottom bitch. I don't. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't want to be bottom bitch. It sounds <laughs> sounds bad. It's okay. I guess it's good, but I mean, little bitch fingers is cool. You don't think it's cool? You better watch it. Look, imagine these little you, bitch fingers gonna get a hold of you, baby. Imagine if you got slapped by somebody who had bitch fingers. It's not just a bitch slap. It's like five bitch slaps. <laughs> little, these, these little bitch fingers get a hold of you, and you're done, baby. Imagine if you had a five finger death punch, but all your fingers are bitch fingers. Cha! Yeah. It's a five five finger bitch punch. Us. Us. What is that? That's how you punch people? Yeah, That's yeah, how you finger yeah, punch? Yeah. Is that yeah, how you do it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All my friends have gone to a place.